this video is for Nova Online Math 161, and today we're looking at ways to verify inverse functions. So, determine whether the two functions are inverses. Um, I have f of x to be 3 minus 2x squared, a quadratic function, and g of x is square root of 6 minus 2x. So, if I just think about it, could they be inverse of each other? One of them is quadratic function, squaring function, and the other one is involving square root. So I can see how they may be inverse of each other, but we have to do some algebra to check it, okay? And that involves compositions. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to check and see if f of or g of x comes out to be x. So that's the first condition that we must check off, okay? The second condition that we must check is if g of f of x comes out to be x, okay? So if we can check off these two boxes, then we get to say, yes, they are inverses of each other. Okay, but um, as you can see, this is going to be two-step process. Um, let's start with this one first. Let's start with checking f of g of x. Okay, if that first condition comes out to be x, when we simplify it, then we're going to move on to the second check. Okay, but if the first one doesn't even come out to be x, there's no reason for us to check the second condition because to be inverses, both of these must be checked off. So let's check. The first condition is f of g of x equal to x. And here's how we can do this. The composition is usually the harder topic um, from section 1.8, but it really helps me to draw some circles and arrows to indicate uh, what's going on or what's going in in which places. So take a look. I want to plug in g of x. So circle the square root of 6 minus 2x and draw an arrow indicating that this is going in to x. But where is x in the other function? x is right there where I highlight it, okay? So I'm going to plug in that square root notation right into that x, okay? So here is f of g of x. You start by writing the 3 first. You see it has the 3. Minus 2. But don't write x squared now. We're not going to do x squared. We're going to write that square root notation. Square root of. Uh -oh, square root of. 6 minus 2x. So I just wrote that. I just substituted that square root um, into that x, but what's still left? That exponent of 2. So I really think the composition, the setup part is the hardest. After that, we're just going to simplify it, okay? So let's see, the 3 and the negative 2 will wait a little bit. But if you take a look right here, we have a square root and squaring. What will happen to those two? They will cancel out. So when that cancels out, we will have that 6 minus 2x um, coming out. And we now can distribute. So the 3 stays right there. But when you distribute negative 2 in, you'll get negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12. And negative 2 times negative 2x, that turns out to be positive 4x. Now let's simplify this. Combine the like term of 3 and negative 12. 3 minus 12 is negative 9. So you have negative 9 plus 4x. Now, is this what we wanted to see? Oh no, we did not want to see that. We wanted to see just a simple x coming out. Now, this is not x. So did it meet the first condition? Nope. Now we can stop there for this work.
we don't have to go on and check the second condition because it didn't even meet the first half. Okay, so here's our conclusion. F and G are not inverses. Okay, and you don't have to continue to check the other composition because, you know, the condition is it needs to be true both ways. So the first example that I shared with you, it came out to be not inverses of each other. I'm going to do one more, okay? And here is my second example. f of x is square root, um, not square root, cube root of 3x minus 6. And g of x is 1 third times x cubed minus 2. Now, you know, if functions have multiple operations, like multiplying, adding, subtracting, it's kind of hard to see if they are inverses by just the look of them. So we're going to do that two-step check. To verify, we're going to find f of g of x. And we hope to see x out of it. Okay? And... We also need to see g of f of x. And we want to see x. If both comes out to be x, then we're going to conclude f and g are inverse of each other. So let's do one at a time. Let me move this second condition to the bottom. I'll handle that later. But let's start by checking f of g of x. Okay? So what I do is I circle g. And g is one third x cubed minus two. And we're going to draw an arrow to indicate that that is getting substituted in for x. So it's going in right there. Okay, so let's write down what f of g of x is with the substitution. So f of g of x is. Start with the cube root first. So you have that cube root outside. Cube root of, but make it a little long because we're going to have some things inside. We write down the 3, but instead of x, we're going to write down 1 third x cubed minus 2. And a parenthesis. And then after that, we still need to write down plus 6. Plus 6. All done with composition. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Okay, so working from inside, if I distribute the 3, I get 3 times 1 third x cubed. 3 times 1 third is just 1. So I'm going to get 1 x cubed out, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Bring down that plus 6, and now let's simplify the inside part of this cube root. Look what happened. This negative 6 and positive 6 will cancel out. So I only really have q, uh, cube root of x cubed. Now what does that come out as? Cube root and that exponent of 3 will cancel out. So I only have x out. And look at that. And that's what we wanted to see, right? If two functions are inverses of each other, um, if you do a composition with them, f of g of x and g of f of x, they both need to come out to be x. So look, it met the first condition. So now we get to go and do the composition the other way. Okay, let me copy this down. Okay, over here to check for that composition um, the other way around. So for this, I need to plug in f of x. So you circle f of x and you're going to draw an arrow to indicate that f of x is going into x and g. Okay. So what is g of f of x? Let's write that down. You start by writing one third. But instead of x cubed, you're going to write down cube root of 3x plus 6 cubed 
minus 2. Okay. All right. Now that's it for composition. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Okay. Keep that one third. But you notice there is cube root and there is cubing. Those will cancel right out. So I will have 3x plus 6 left in the parenthesis and minus 2 outside. All right, let's distribute that third in. 1 third times 3x is 1x. And 1 third times 6, this is what I'm doing now. 1 third times 6 is going to give you plus 2. Oh, but when I bring down that minus 2 that was outside the whole time, we notice that positive 2 and negative 2 cancels out. So what's the only thing left? x. And again, that's what we want to see, right? When you are verifying inverses, uh, we want to do a composition. Do f of g of x and g of f of x. And if both comes out to be x, then we have enough evidence. We have, we prove that f and g are inverse of each other. So, um, when you are taking an exam um, and you have these verifying questions, you need to show that much work. If they are inverse, I guess the work will be double because you have to check both way. Um, but after that, let's write the conclusion. F and G are inverses. And the support that you need to include is the composition of functions. So we, I guess you kind of want to see them coming out not to be inverses because if one way you fail, you really don't have to go check the other. But in this video, I wanted to show you two examples where one of them is uh, one pair of functions are not inverses and the other one, um, f and g are inverses in the second example.